In today's video, we are talking internet setup. I've been asked by a few people now what my internet setup looks like, especially after the wireless quest video, everybody was asking me how I get those perfect five gigahertz speeds. So today I'm going to show you my exact gigabit setup and how I think you can maximize your internet speeds from your ISP. So you guys are absolutely amazing. Thank you so much for 4K. The number of people subscribed watching these videos is now all the way up to 8.7%. So if you're part of that 91.3% of people that aren't yet subscribed, make sure to subscribe, ding my bell, become part of the 360p gang. Follow me on my social media here and here. Join our Discord, join our Reddit. Let's get into the video. So if you ask me, there's nothing worse in 2020 than paying for 100 megabit and getting 20, which is exactly what was happening to me before I decided to take my internet into my own hands. No amount of calling my ISP and telling them that my internet speeds are crap would fix that. So I decided to take matters into my own hands and I'm gonna show you what I have done to the internet in this house. Because I'm now paying for gigabit and I'm getting gigabit. Perfect 1000. So hopefully this video will help you bring your speeds up. So first of all, let's talk the router. The router your ISP gives you is usually crap. Well, in Ireland anyway. I don't know how it is in America. In America, the quality of routers might be a little bit better. So that's the first thing I switched out. So if we go downstairs and look, this white box here, this is a modem. Well, something that I would call a modem. It's what bridges the gigabit connection coming through fiber optics into ethernet, which later on goes into WAN of the router that your ISP has given you. I exchanged the router that my ISP gave me for a Netgear R7000 router, which I put into PPPoE mode and plugged straight into that white Huawei modem so that I can completely eliminate the router from my ISP, which was the ideal solution for me because putting the router from my ISP into bridge mode would just add more places for there to be a fault in the line. Hey, fiber goes in there and then WAN goes in there, WAN goes to R7000 and LAN goes out. So then there's an extremely long ethernet cable going from ethernet one on that R7000 router outside up the wall and into my room coming out the top of my ceiling. So that cable goes through the attic and up through my ceiling. Then it reaches a gigabit switch, which I thought was necessary because I'm not putting more than one ethernet cable up through the attic. So that goes into a gigabit switch. There it goes. There's my LAN cable, which splits my connection into five. And into my beautiful mess. Uh, this is true cable management. If anybody says anything about my cable management, they will die. <laughs> so here's the switch. As you can see, everything is connected and working and uh, double sided tape for the win because that's what's that's what's holding it up. Also, I was wrong. It's not a TP link switch. It's a Netgear switch. So whatever I say in the video is wrong. But yeah, cable management all the way. <laughs> Well, look, at least I tried. Like, don't criticize me too hard, please. Here's the PoE injector for the access point. As you can see, PoE goes in here and then LAN goes in there and that takes it to the access point. But that's okay because nobody ever gets to see it. Ta-da. There is no speed loss through this switch. I don't think switches do speed loss at all. So if any of you like are just wondering, yeah, no, I don't think there is any speed loss. Everybody connected to that switch is still getting their thousand. So from that switch, all five ethernet connections are taken. My main PC is connected to it. My NAS is connected to it. My brother's computer is connected to it. And my access point is connected to it. Now the access point is the bread and the butter of, of this entire setup. It's what completed it for me, basically. No matter how good my ethernet speeds were, I was getting shit. Wi-Fi speeds. Now, thankfully, as I said, I work in a computer shop and the people there are insane. So I was recommended the Unify access point. This is the LR model, so the long range model, and it does both 2.4 and 5 gigahertz. And this one is absolutely insane. So this one is power over ethernet. So you will either need a power over ethernet switch if you want one of these, or you will need a PoE injector, which is what I'm using. Basically, what it means is both the power and the internet all go through one cable. So you only need one cable. So that's sitting on my ceiling and that is sending internet all over the house and all over the house 
there's at least 500 meg, which is completely understandable because I did not expect a thousand meg all over this house. These walls are freaking insane. I don't know who built this, but in my house, when you turn off the lights in the kitchen, the TV upstairs turns off. I, I, I don't know. This is what completed the setup for me. So this is basically how I'm getting my perfect five gigahertz speeds. This is how I can play VR wirelessly, zero lag on the Oculus Quest. Basically it connects to five gigahertz on that. My computer is connected with ethernet and also the local speeds on that access point are just so goddamn good. If I want to download something off my NAS through wireless, I'm getting that perfect 112 meg. If I want to download through phone, I'm getting about 80 meg. It's, it's absolutely insane. For local networking, this is absolutely unbelievable. Not only for local networking, of course, for external networking, it's also amazing, but for local networking, it's just the best. So I think that's really it. I don't think there's much more to say about my networking setup. So let's conclude. Basically, the first thing I would recommend if you guys want to upgrade your networking setup is upgrade your router, because that's usually the worst part of the entire setup. The router you are getting from your ISP is usually going to be crap, and some don't even give ones that do five gigahertz. So I would recommend get yourself a nice router, pay about 150 euro for it. It's that's, I think, a decent price to at least begin. And if you can, of course, pay more, you know. Also, I'm running a custom firmware on my router. I'm running Advanced Tomato, and everybody's going to get triggered in the comments section now telling me that Advanced Tomato is out of date. But guys, I absolutely love the UI, and I am not switching unless I can find another custom firmware with that beautiful and simplistic of a UI. Plus, it's working really damn well, so I don't see a point in switching. I'm staying on my advanced tomato. I absolutely love it. It's getting me the speeds I need. So yeah, so that's the first thing I would recommend. And then if you want to go that step further and actually just go full blown, incredible networking speeds, you might want to get yourself a nice access point. Now, it doesn't necessarily need to be this one. The, these ones are pretty expensive. They're about 120 euro each. They are absolutely insane though. Like they will get you your gigabit speeds. Like if I grab my phone right now and launch uh, fast.com, which is my preferred way of checking internet speeds. If I launch it here right now, you're going to see that jump in a sec. Yep, there's 500. Yeah, it, my phone is a little weird. It like takes a little while to get there. Eventually it does actually get to the 1000, which it's absolutely insane. So that's another thing you might wanna get, except if you get an access point, I would recommend turning off the Wi-Fi on your router so there's no like them fighting over each other. So that's actually what I've done. I've disabled the Wi-Fi on my router and we're just using the access point. And um, definitely if you need, if you want a lot of devices to be connected through ethernet, ethernet does give a massive, massive advantage. So if you can connect most of your devices through ethernet, definitely do get yourself a nice switch. This is just a cheap one from TP-Link, it's gigabit. It's not a TP-Link switch, it's a Netgear switch. So whatever I say in the video is wrong. If you can do get, get a local gigabit switch, because even if you're not getting gigabit from your ISP, having gigabit locally is really nice because if you have like a gigabit switch and a gigabit access point and you have like a media server, then that gigabit is always going to benefit you locally. Like let's say you had Plex running on a media server and you wanted to watch movies from that Plex server, that would definitely benefit you locally, That gigab those gigabit speeds. So that's always really nice. So yeah, those are definitely just, those are a few things that I would definitely recommend you upgrading if you want to make your networking setup work really, really well and get those speeds that you are promised from your ISP. That's going to be it for today's video. If you guys have any questions or if you want any recommendations or are thinking of upgrading your network setup and want to ask me something because I, this took me quite a long time, quite a lot of perfections going on here. So I was perfecting this for a very long time. So I think I know what I'm doing at this point definitely ask me down in the comment section below and I will do my best to help you. If you liked the video, make sure to give it a like. And if you're part of that 91.3% of people that aren't yet subscribed, make sure to subscribe, ding my bell, become part of the 360p gang, join us on Discord and Reddit, follow me on my social media here and here because I want to hear what you guys have to say. So that's going to be it for this video. If you want to be notified of future videos, I upload tech videos daily and I upload VR videos on Mondays and Fridays. Make sure to subscribe, ding my bell, and see you again in the next one. Peace. I swear to God. Here is the PoE injector for the, my beautiful NAS up there. Quality. Okay. 
we are talking internet setup. 